come and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia. from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the gospel Lord Jesus Christ. Some time ago, when I was still living in my home state of New Jersey, I returned home from work on a cold and blustery winter night. As I got out of my car, I noticed an elderly gentleman slip and fall on the ice, spilling his groceries on the sidewalk. I ran over to him and offered my assistance. When I asked, are you okay, sir? The man looked up and became frightened. I had seen that look before and knew immediately that he was afraid of me, fearful that I was going to rob him. So, without saying another word, I walked away and left him there to struggle on his own. I now realized that the man I encountered was blind, not only because he couldn't see past the color of my skin, but because he could not see Christ living in me. Yet, I often ask the same question of myself. How many times have I not seen Christ in those around me? How often have I not recognized the face of God in others because sin has blinded me to the reality of God's truth and love? The fact is that many of us are blinded by the lies of the secular culture and we have become more influenced by the society than by the teachings of Jesus Christ and his church. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life who sets us free. Christ gives us his freedom so that all may understand God's love for them and enter into relationship with him that is so personal that every word we speak and every action we take flows from our love and faithful obedience to our God and Savior. We are also deafened by the raucous discord of a culture of political correctness and social indoctrination, where we are told what to think, that, left unchallenged by the gospel of Jesus Christ, will ultimately erode the spiritual foundation upon which our faith is built, all in the name of tolerance and diversity and at the expense of authentic truth and freedom. 
Because we become hard of hearing and cannot clearly discern Christ speaking to us, we often reject the principle that we must accept the beauty and truth of what the church believes and teaches, thinking instead that we can pick and choose what to believe. Instead of trying to internalize the faith and treat it as the standard for judging the values of an unbelieving culture that surrounds us, people all too often judge the church's teachings and accept them on the basis of whether they or not they conform to the surrounding culture. Jesus did not die so that his truth could be changed by the culture. Jesus gave his life and died so that he could transform the culture with his truth. We cannot embrace the cross without Christ. Let us take, for example, our beloved brothers and sisters whom we love with the love of God, with gender dysphoria. This is from a woman who identifies as a male. I didn't think that having periods would be part of my lived experience. I felt isolated. Everything about periods was tailored to girls, yet me, as a boy, was experiencing this, and nothing in the world documented that. That doesn't even make any sense. Men don't have periods. Only women menstruate. It is one of many of the defining factors of being female, along with hormones, reproductive systems, and chromosomes. The fact is that people are not born trapped in the wrong body of the wrong sex. If gender dysphoria were biological, then studies of twins should prove that. Instead, the opposite is true. The largest twins transgender study in the world says that only 28% of the time did identical twins with 100% of the same DNA exposed to the same prenatal hormones identify as transgender, 28%. Of that 28%, 70% of those cases, the reason for identifying as transgender had nothing to do with biology. And after puberty, between 75 to 95% of young children who expressed confusion about their biological sex outgrew it. In today's gospel, the blind and deaf man is brought before the Lord Jesus to be healed. And Jesus takes the man off by himself away from the crowd. We live in a complex, secular environment and are exposed to a variety of ideas that are incompatible with the truth of our faith. We live in a world where objective moral norms are treated as mere rules and regulations that can be dismissed when they become too demanding. That regard, for example, sexual differences as merely anatomical, biological, and functional, leading to an acceptance of pornography, contraception, and sex outside of marriage between one man and one woman. We live in a world that regards incurable illness as an indication that both the body and the person have outlived their usefulness, thus promoting physician-assisted suicide and euthanasia. We must never forget that church teachings in the area of faith and morals can never change, regardless of whether or not people accept them or are faithful to them. We as Christians cannot accept the Jiminy Cricket philosophy of let your conscience be your guide, which suggests that we are responsibly following our conscience when we knowingly replace Christ's teachings with the world's opinions. If we are to free ourselves from the slavery of this culture of death, we who are blind and deaf to the truth 
must come before Jesus. We must remove ourselves from the darkness and confusion of sin so that the light of God's life and truth may shine brightly in the eyes of faith. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord Jesus entered the world to proclaim the truth. In John's gospel, Jesus tells us, for this I was born, for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Let Jesus place his hands in our ears and on our tongue so that we may be willing, no matter what the cost, to recognize moral truth when it becomes clear. When our ears and eyes are opened, let us seek the truth by reflecting on the principles of the natural law, the law which God has written in our hearts, secure in the knowledge that a properly formed conscience can never go against the law of God. And when we hear those beautiful words of Christ in our own lives, ephata, be opened, let us remember our call to transform the world by the way we live our everyday lives, bearing faithful witness, not to the gospel of popularity, but to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.